Hey there, hi. Today's a good day to fix something and help a stranger in the process. Let's go. Before we start today's episode, I want to say a big thank you to iFixit, our sponsor for today. Now, let's hear some wonderful questions from all of you. I have a question for Ms. Mercury Stardust. I've been dealing with this clogged sink for quite some time. I have tried Google. I have tried random techniques that have popped into my head. I have tried everything, and I can't seem to get that stopper out of that sink. I've done the thing, like when you go under the sink and you jiggle that thing, and it's not coming out. I've tried like duct tape when there wasn't any water in there to see if I could like stick it onto the stopper and maybe like pull it out that way. I've even used not so safe things to try to see if I can get it out. Please, can you help me get this fixed? I'm desperate. Now, I think you actually have two problems that I would like to go over. First, let's take care of that sink stopper, right? Now, I'm going to show you how you can go underneath your sink and actually pop it out. But also, you said at the beginning of your video, you're still having problems with the clog itself that is not flowing properly. Maybe there's some gunk inside the stopper that's making it so much harder. But just in case, I'm going to show you a little extra thing along the way to make sure you're nice and um, good to go. <laughs> okay, so let's go and get a little bit messy. So in an ideal world, the sink stopper would do this, right? <laughs> when you push it down, it should pop up. But you are having a problem, and no matter what you do, it just isn't popping up, right? So we're gonna go underneath the sink, and I'm gonna show you how it actually works and how it should work, and hopefully we can solve the problem along the way. So when you pull that lever up and down, what you're doing is you're actually messing with this mechanism. When you pull up, this whole unit goes up, and when you push down, this whole unit goes down. This is attached to the underside of your stopper. So what we're gonna to wanna to do is make sure that A, there's no water in here, put a bucket underneath here just to make sure, and then take this apart, and we're gonna slide it out like so. And you can actually see inside of there and see that hole, the stopper. That's the underneath of the stopper, and that's the eyelet. So when you slide this through there, that's holding it in and it's going up and down. A lot of times they get loose, a lot of times they get stuck. It's completely natural for the stopper to give you a hard time. And now to undo all of it, we're gonna go to the P-trap right here. And you're absolutely gonna wanna make sure there's a bucket underneath here, okay? Now you don't need to turn off your water or anything because you don't have water coming in. That isn't the problem, okay? You can just leave everything on and just take the stopper and loosen this up. If you have a hard time loosening this up, get yourself a wonderful adjustable groove joint pliers like this, and then adding it to that and then spinning it out, lefty loosey. I am gonna take this long flathead screwdriver and I'm gonna go and push upwards to try to push it out. And I'm gonna grab it with my other hand and pull it up. And that's what it looks like. And that's what the little knob is going right through. These are incredibly difficult to get out sometimes and really hard to get in. <laughs> so use a lot of patience when you're doing this, but that should be solving a problem. Now, here's the thing. You might pull out a ginormous hair clog when you are doing this, or maybe your flat hand is too short. You can use anything to just dislodge it, pushing it up, anything that will fit in that slot, try to push it up and it should come out, okay? So let's put this all back together and then answer another question of the day. You can see the hole right there. So I wanna take it, make sure the hole lines up and go right through it. If there's a gasket in there, make sure the gas is in the same spot where it was when you took it out. And then everything's back together and it is good to go. But before I forget, you also asked us about the clog. So let's go over some options, okay? You were trying to get the stopper out in order to get the clog fixed. Now, there's a very good chance that there was a hair clog or something build up around the stopper. So when we fix that problem, you wanna fix the problem in the process. But if you didn't, we're gonna go and look underneath here. And this is the P-trap. The P-trap can be taken off here again, 
and there will be another connecting pipe. That connecting pipe is the one that's actually connected right to your drain line and you can actually snake it right from there. So you don't need to take your stopper off to actually snake your drain, okay? But I'm gonna go back up and show you how you can do all that. This is called a skinny drain cleaner or a Cobra skinny drain cleaner. This is what it looks like when you get it in the store, okay? These are about 10 to $12. You can get them at almost any hardware stores, including Amazon. I highly recommend them. I think they're very user friendly and they're low cost prohibitive. And they're only 10 feet long, which means they're not long enough to get you into severe trouble. And they're small enough to try to take care of most things, but not necessarily gonna be an end all. So if this doesn't work, I probably would invest trying to ask a plumber or a professional for help. But the first thing you wanna do when you get it is then take the tip and bend it at a 45 degree angle. The reason why we want this at a 45 degree angle is because when you're putting this down the pipe and you're spinning it, you're turning this whole unit, this is all together, this is not separate, this is not spin separately. When you're spinning the whole unit, this right here will grab the S curves of the pipe and push it down. If you have the type of stopper where you can just take off the top, you don't need to remove the stopper in order to put this down because it's designed to go right through there anyways. So what we're gonna do is take a little bit at a time and feed it down there. Now, as we're feeding it down there, what we wanna do is tighten this up and then spin the whole unit like this. We're spinning the whole unit. And as we're spinning it and we're getting farther down, we're gonna wanna then loosen it up and then put more in there until it stops, tightening it up and spinning it all again. Okay, we don't want to have this much extra out because when we're spinning it, this is going to happen. You're going to have a kink up and you're going to bend this and it's going to make your life a lot harder. Okay, we don't want to do that. So make sure you keep it nice and close to the drain hole itself and spin it and add all the pressure inside. And then once you're done, you can spin it all up, clean it as it's going inside of your, your container. And then once you get it all back in, you should be good to go. Now, let's go answer more questions for the day. Dear Mercury, I need your help. I hope you see this. I follow you on TikTok and I love your tips and tricks. My daughter flushed something down the toilet and I don't know what it is, but now the toilet moves really slow and clogs. Is there anything I can do besides call a plumber? <laughs> oh boy, kids love to think that toilets are magical go away holes. <laughs> <laughs> Kids just love them. They're just so intrigued by them. They put things down, they flush it, and it goes away forever. <laughs> but things like this happen all the time, and it's okay. I'm going to show you what you can do to take off the toilet itself and try to get it out. You could also use a claw um, tool that can actually grab it, but most of the time you're going to be better off to take the toilet off and go from underneath by using a toilet auger, which is what I'm going to show you. But before you do anything, you should always use a plunger to try to suction it up. You never know if you're gonna get just enough suction to pull it just a little bit to the surface so you can snag it out of the toilet, okay? But let's go take care of the toilet auger and see how we can do that. Let's get messy. So here's our handy dandy little toilet here. You can see it doesn't have the toilet tank. It just has a toilet bowl. But for our purposes, I'm gonna walk you through what you can do to get that nasty toy out, okay? Now, what you're gonna see here is that typically you have something that's hiding right here, right? You're gonna take, take that off with a flathead or something, and then you will see a screw there. You can undo the screw on either side of your toilet, and then what you'll be able to do is lift it right up. You wanna lift it straight up, and then put it on its side, the whole thing. If you're gonna leave the tank on it, right, I highly recommend putting something underneath it to not apply too much pressure on your tank. Because if you lay it on the side and the tank is pressing up against the ground really hard, what you're doing is you're putting an uneven pressure on the gasket that goes right in here. And that gasket doesn't take much for it to get cranky with you and not want to work properly. That's where you can get leaks right here at the base. But now that the screws are out and you're gonna take it right up, we're gonna lift it straight up and then lay it on its side, okay? 
Now, as we lay it on the side, you're gonna see a few things. You're gonna see this long little maze. This is called backflow prevention. This S curve helps to prevent bad smells coming from the sewage line. And also with this line here, it actually helps to prevent anything from coming back up. So if you're having water rising up, you're not gonna have overflowing as much. What does happen though, is toys will get lodged right here in the S curve. And once they get jammed, there's not much you can do other than taking a toilet auger and trying to slam it out by going from underneath. So that's what we're gonna do. Okay, now the toilet's on the ground so we have more room so you can see what we're doing. This is a toilet auger. It has two major components, the little sliding bar and a little hoister that the sliding bar goes into. Now, you can see as I pull this up, the knob itself, the bulb, goes in. And as I push it out, the bulb goes out. This is basically gonna act as our sledgehammer <laughs> that's gonna go inside the toilet. So we're gonna put it right in the slot right here. And now what I'm gonna do is take this big sliding rod that I have right here, and I'm gonna push it down. And as I push it down, it's gonna slide and push through the toilet itself. We're gonna do it a couple times. And you can rotate it and spin the slider like this to get it through there. Okay, now that loud noise is gonna be intimidating. The loud noise is gonna make you feel like something is wrong. That's okay, right? So we're gonna keep pounding away, give it a good five minute or 10 minute try. And if it's not coming out, the sad truth is you might not be able to get it to come out, okay? Once in a while, I've been there, you might have to replace the toilet because something is so lodged in there, there's nothing you can do to get it out. But this should do the trick, okay? And you can clean it by taking a rag and then gently pushing against the ground and push it out and clean it as you go along. A little bit of dish soap mixed in with some hot water will do it. If you're using bleach and other things, it can actually speed the process of um, ru making it rusty a little bit quicker. We don't necessarily want that, okay? So there you go, another problem solved. I hope you learned a thing or two today and I hope you remember that patience is key. If you ever get frustrated and you're like, oh no, I, I'm not like Mercury, <laughs> it's okay. It took me a long time to get good at this stuff and to be honest, I'm still not that great at plumbing. I'm learning all the time, just like you are. Don't beat yourself up when you're frustrated. It's so much harder to solve a problem, okay? And remember, you're absolutely worth the time it takes to learn a new skill. Have a good day, take care, and bye-bye. <laughs> plumbing isn't always the easiest thing in the world. That's why they call them plumbers. I don't know what that means. <laughs> okay. Oh, let me try that again. <laughs> I was like, where's this going, Mercury? Isn't it called plumbers? <laughs> the word makes no sense. Sure, plumbers mean something. I'm sure it does. Okay, you ready?